Stitchless TV. Now today on Stitchless TV, I'm going to show you how really easy it is to drape a front and back bodice sloper, otherwise known as a bodice block. Now bodice slopers and bodice blocks are really useful things because the idea is, is that you create a perfect pattern of yourself. So if you want to create the perfect bodice sloper, either for yourself or maybe for a client, I really recommend, well there are a couple of ways that you can do it. One way is to pad out your dressmaker's dummy according to your measurements but also the distribution of your measurements. So for example, you might be a 34 bust but maybe from the side seam, um, I don't know, say it's 20 at the front and 14 at the back. So these things are quite important, I think, when you're creating a body double of yourself. Now the other way that you can do it is if you get a friend to watch this video very carefully and then she can do it to you. Now, the thing about doing a body double of yourself is that you want it to be the best you. So, it isn't just simply getting the measurements right and the distribution of the measurements right. You want it to be with a good bra, with nice shaped boobies and just to kind of make your... because none of our shoulders are perfect, are they? So using shoulder pads on the shoulders, if you're going to use your um, bodice block later on to be a jacket maybe, having small shoulder pads on the shoulders makes it a really good body double. Okay, you need two pieces of calico, no specific measurement, but just sort of roughly run it across your dummy and make sure that it's long enough. Like do it longer than you need and wider than you need. And then you want to have two lines, one going down a grain and one going across. Now for doing this, um, I've been shown <laughs> that it's a really good idea to use masking tape. So first of all, I lay I lay it onto my wobbly dummy so it lines up with the centre. So in advance, maybe it would be a good idea to mark out where the centre of your dummy is. I'm just going to apply some pieces of masking tape just to hold it in place at the front. Now, I don't know if I said, I did actually fold back. <laughs> I folded back um, a piece of the calico at the front and then ran it down the centre front of the bodice. Now, what you want to do is you want this line. You, you see that line? You want it to be at right angles, okay? So I'm lifting up that line and I'll hold it in place with the pin. Now, we're going to have to cut around the neck, which you just sort of roughly do at this stage. So you're just roughly cutting around the neck where you think the neckline is. Now, let your um, fabric just drop wherever it wants to drop. So mine seems to be quite happily going down there. So I've got way too much fabric. So if the side seam's going to be about there, I'm just going to cut off this stuff here so it's safe for me to cut off all that fabric. So do you remember, we want that line to come up at a right angle. So I'm just going to put a pin there to hold it in place. And then we can start to have a look 
at what we've got. So I can see that if I have that up at a right angle, that that really happily wants to become a kind of dot there. So I'm going to start applying some tape to hold that in place. So we're just kind of doing it fairly roughly at this stage. So if it's holding it down, then that's fine. So let's go back to the front. Now, if you just see where it naturally wants to fall down at a right angle from the apex point of the bust down, there'll be like a point where it just naturally wants to go down. So once you've found that, then you can cut up into it Lay, lay, oh, but do you know what? Before I do that, I need to snip up into the waist because it's not sitting properly, and then that will be cut off afterwards. So I'm going to lay that down and lay that over it until it looks like it's laying fairly flat. So that kind of looks okay to me. And then just apply tape to hold it in place. Now you can keep fiddling with this until you get a fit that you are happy with. So that looks fine to me for the moment. Now what I do need to do, and I don't know if I said this, it is important to mark out where the waist is. So when you've re when you've padded out your dummy, you do want to know where the waist is. So I need to cut away all the excess fabric for my front sloper in line with that waist. Because if I want it to be longer, I'll be shaping another piece of fabric underneath and attaching it. You don't use the same piece of fabric. The, the bust on our dummy, I guess I should measure it. The bust on our dummy, they, they have quite curved boobies. So to be able to achieve this so quickly, I think is a really great thing. Now we're gonna have a look at the armhole. Right, just ignore the fact that this is laying over here like this because it's not important at the moment. But what is important is that all the area outside of it is fairly fitted, not too fitted. You need to be able to stick two fingers in there. So if I am happy with that shape, I'm going to cut away Sometimes it's easy to just roughly cut away some fabric and then go in and do it properly. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm following where the shoulder pad is. And then I'm coming around here. Now apparently good armholes are actually quite small armholes. So Shingo, who taught me how to do this, says that a small armhole, if you have a small armhole, you often have more movement than with a big armhole, which is kind of difficult to get your head around. So this is what we have so far. So this is going to form the front. So when we work on the back, it's exactly the same process and we tape it to the front so it ends up being one piece. But I thought you might be interested in knowing what the measurement of this bust is. 
is 37 and a half inches and quite a lot of that measurement is at the front so it's quite a curvy bust so ordinarily that would be quite tricky to get that sort of fit but like this it, it is easy so let's work on the back so when you do the back it's really it's the same sort of thing so we want to line up the, the line, the vertical line going down. So it's a bit higher than the neck because you want the shoulder to be able to um, go over there. So I'm going to line up that line with the, the center line that runs down my dummy. Down to the waist. So I'll put pins in. And then I'm just going to hold it in place with masking tape. And then just like before, just see where the fabric wants to go. Where does it naturally, where does it want to lay? naturally over the shoulder. I'm just going to trim off some of this excess because I definitely don't need all of this. Now if you do trim off too much calico, don't worry about it because you can always tape more on. Right, so keeping this all at a right angle just for the moment, I'm just going to stick a pin there when I know that it's at a right angle. And then I'm going to come here and shape that neck. Just kind of roughly, just to get it so that the shoulder can sit down a bit. So I can trim off more from the side seam. So I'll show you that. I'm going to trim off a bit more from the side seam. So at the moment we don't have any actual side seams. They get created afterwards. We focus on basically taking a mould of the, the bodice that we're working on. So do you see that? So it's going at a, a right angle. It's going horizontally and that, that one's going down at a right angle. So I'm not going to do anything with that at the moment. I want to have a look up on the shoulder. So I've got this excess stuff. So I'm going to trim that off. I'll probably show you the shoulder in a minute. So I just let it go over to where it wants to go. Pop a pin in and then I'll tape it in place when I'm happy with how it sits. Right, we don't need all the stuff that goes below the waist, so I'm going to trim that off now. So, now let's have a look at this. Where, where does it want to go? It sort of wants to go up there. Let it go there. So have a little look at where it naturally goes down at a right angle. So look at that. Look, if I just go like that, can you see it's sort of naturally going down there? In fact, I can score it, can't I? So what you need to do is you need to slash up it. Don't go too far though and just see how it wants to lay. So look, that seems it could probably go up a bit higher there. Okay, so that looks quite good to me. So I'll just pop a pin down there for now. And then I'll start taping it. 
hold it in place. So that looks good. So it's not too tight. It's kind of important. Don't make it too tight unless you're making a like a boned bodice or corset or something. So let's have a look at these side seams now. Now you could go in again and put another, um, you could do another dart in there as well if you wanted it tighter than that. I don't think I do. So now I'm just going to tape up this area here. So I'm not trimming anything off there. Remember we don't have any side seams or shoulder seams yet. We haven't created them. We haven't decided where they're going to be, okay? Right, so now I'm going to have to shape the armhole there, which is really difficult to do from this angle, but I'll try. So can you see that a little bit? So I'm just going to cut into it so I can get access. And then I'll start going around where the edge of that shoulder pad was. And then come down here. Now I'm not going to pretend that armholes are really easy to decide where, where and what shape to do. But I'd say do it smaller because you can always make it bigger. This is what we have. We've done the front. That is the shoulder. But it's not a shoulder seam, okay? That's just us completing the shoulder. We have a small armhole, which for me will be with the seam allowance. That looks like it's with the seam allowance to me. And then this is our back. So it's completely fitted, but with, I stick my fingers in there, with about two fingers of ease in there. So we now decide where the side seam is going to go and where the shoulder seam is going to go. Now I'm just going to do classic style, which is usually about there, I would say. Now remember, this side seam could be a curvy thing, could be a zigzag thing, but like I said, we're doing classic ones. Now what is important is give yourself a notch, okay? Now shoulder seams, we're going to do a shoulder seam on there. So you're not going to be able to see this very easily, but again, I'm going to do a classic one, which is like that and I will give myself a notch up there so I can keep track of that. Now as for our darts, I can either draw them out now, or, oops, <laughs> now, or I can do them afterwards. Or I could create a new sort of shape like a kind of um, princess seam line or something. But it has to touch the end of the darts. But I think for today, I'm just going to do like really simple darts. So, so long as I touch that point there, I can have a dart that whoops, goes straight down like that. But you will do it more straightly than that. And then for the bust dart, it's got to touch that point there, so I'm going to do it just straight, going all the way to the, sh it's got to go to the side seam, yeah? But I mean, it could actually go down there if I wanted it to, as so long as it touched there. And then this dart here, at the back, has to go up to there, and then straight down. Like that, whoops. So your darts will be straighter than mine. So now what we do is we cut up the side seam, cut up the shoulder seam, and 
cut up the dart and splay it out and then we're going to draw off a, we're going to draw off another one with the seam allowances and then we sew that up and you'll see it'll be a perfect fitting bodice block So when you take it off the dummy, it's like this. It's a good opportunity to reinforce all your seams on the inside by adding more masking tape. Because once you start cutting up them, you'll end up with loads of layers floating around. So I've gone in everywhere and I've added masking tape wherever there was like a, a seam. Um, where I'd folded back the centre front, I've overed it out and I've done a dotted line to show where the centre front is. Uh, I've labelled front and I've labelled back. Right, we can now start cutting up our bodice. So I'm beginning at the side seam. I'm just going to cut straight up there. And then I'm going to release it from the shoulder seam. So cutting up the seam the line that I decided was going to be the, the shoulder seam. Now if I'm happy with where these darts fall, I'm going to cut up one of those, don't go beyond the end. You're basically, you're basically, you're, you're cutting it out so that it can lay flat. So you can see that this isn't laying flat, so there's going to have to be another dart in there to make it lay flat. So when that's pressed, you'll see that that will lay perfectly flat, and so it can then become a paper pattern piece that will be your perfect fitting front bodice. So we need to also cut up our dart at the back so can you see that that isn't it isn't laying flat is it so we've got to make it lay flat by cutting up the dart that we created for it to be a perfect fit and now it lays flat so now you've got your own completely personal front bodice which will be cut to a fold, or you'll do it with um, a front opening and a facing, and your perfect fitting back bodice, which is going to be cut to a fold, but you need to add seam allowances. So I've traced it off with half an inch seam allowances. Um, and then I've shaped the space within the dart to allow for the fact that when it's folded, it kind of takes up more room. Uh, ah, right. So I've decided to do the front, so it's like a, a front on a fold. So it's like a, a dress front. It's important to mark the end of your darts with a notch, a little dot. But you would probably do it with tailor's chalk, not a sharpie pen. <laughs> because when you do your dart, you have to know exactly where to stop sewing. Yeah? And then you press them towards the sides. Um, what else? Yeah, so you do notches. You do notches to show the edges of your darts. You mark a little tailor's tack or a little notch for the end of the dart. I've added half an inch seam allowance onto the side. No seam allowance on my armhole. Yours might need that. And a seam allowance on the shoulder. So that's my front. So because my front has no opening, um, I've added like half an inch onto the centre back with a view to putting a zip in there. So once again you have to mark the end of your dart, add half an inch seam allowance um, and mark 
where your uh, dart begins. So I'm going to say that together and in theory it will all fit together. Right, it's got to be pressed but that's the back so I've done my two backs and now I'm going to do the front. So they're my two waist darts at the front. A little tip about sewing darts, you never start at the apex, you always start at the edge. Now with this calico it really is like sewing paper. So you can grab where the dot is, make your notches at the bottom line up and then basically you can sort of score a line there to where the dart ends and then just hold it and sew and sort of stop and go on, off into nothing there at that dot. So it is a good fit. There's a little bit of room in there, but that's good. So if I turn it around. So the armhole is good. Everything looks good in terms of fit. Yeah. It's very wonky. Um, so that's where you would put your zip. I've got a lump in here because of the um, corset underneath. You won't have a lump. So, so that's nice and neat, good fit there as well. Now, we have got a video on how to do the sleeves, but I might show you myself how to do the sleeves because I can try and simplify it for you. Or maybe you just want like short sleeves you know, sleeves that come to like here. That's a handy thing to know as well, isn't it? Because sometimes when you have dress patterns, don't like the top of your arms and you want to know how to add a short sleeve. So comment below and tell me. So this is the actual dress that I made for Mumtaz without her coming for any fittings at all. And it was using this method exactly the same as we did today. Now if you wanted to make uh, a longer bodice or if you wanted to make a skirt to add to the bottom, it's exactly the same thing. I also made this top, shall I show you? I think you've seen it before, I'll show you. So when you get really good, so when you get really good you can do things like this. So this started out as a bodice block to there, and then I added the lower bit. And then it had a dart, it had a, like a dart there and a dart down there. I have got a tutorial on how I did make this, and it's called something like how to make a designer jacket out of jeans, I think. Um, so here I just relocated the, the darts and the star lines into much more complicated things, but I don't know, it's just like doing a jigsaw puzzle. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, let me know if you want me to show you how to add a sleeve to a bodice when it doesn't have sleeves. So I deliberately did it on a kind of slightly larger busted person because you can probably appreciate that's more of a challenge to get a good fit on. So it just emphasises how good this technique is. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again very soon. Bye!